feels like 1963. Yeah, tell me about it. Well, I wasn't driving in 1963, but I think this is what it would feel like. <laughs> Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. The focus today, Grand Sport Corvettes. You know, back in the 60s, General Motors got a little uh, perturbed at Carroll Shelby because the Cobra was sort of getting all the limelight, and they decided to build the ultimate Corvette, the Grand Sport. It had a tube frame, something like, what was it, 377 cubic inches, uh, lots and lots of horsepower. I'll find out exactly what it is. They were supposed to build 125 of those to go racing. And they did go racing, and did very well, but they only built five, or that's the rumor. There may be a six one, I don't know. But they tend to go in the five to seven million dollar range if you could find somebody who wanted to sell one. These are not Grand Sport Corvettes in the truest sense, but as we say, incredible uh, recreations. And these are not ordinary Corvettes that have been dolled up to look like them. These are ground up superforms. You know their name. They build those incredible GT40s. They also did some wonderful uh, uh, Cobra replicas too. Uh, but really good ones, really good ones. And they've teamed up with Ken Lingenfelder who does the motors for these. And of course he's legendary in General Motors tuning, especially with Corvettes. He's the Corvette guy. Let's meet them. Lance Stander and of course Ken Lingenfelder, the legendary car builder. Lance, good to see you, sir. Good to see you, Jay. Ken, how are you? Jay, how are you? So uh, you're known, of course, as the Corvette guy. Set all kinds of records, built just incredible Corvettes. And as I mentioned, you do those uh, GT40s, the really good ones. Yeah, There's so many you. bad, I hate to use the word kit cars, yeah. because yeah. yours are a, a recreation, yeah. I guess. Factory built. Factory that. built, but just beautiful, beautiful work. How did you do hook up? Was it through Tinder or what happened? How did you, how did you connect? <laughs> well, um, actually through a friend of mine in, in, in Michigan, uh, Todd Andrews introduced me to Ken, the ultimate Corvette guy. Right. And we knew when we did these cars, we had to have an engine of the pedigree and, and, and the, the, the great stuff that Lingenfeld have done. Uh, we wanted that engine and that name on our cars. Okay. So tell us about recreating <coughs> the Grand Sport. Because I have to admit, I was one of those people when I heard about this years ago, I just assumed you were taking 63 Corvettes and you know, doing some body work and a few engine modifications. But this is really a ground up, factory built car, uh, very similar to the way they built the originals, correct? Yeah. Well, the background is um, I came over at, from South Africa and, and started with the Cobras with Carol Shelby and right. done the Cobras, but I was really a Chevy guy in disguise and Ooh. always wanted the Corvette yeah. Grand Sport. And I was after, and all our cars we wanted licensed by the original manufacturers. We weren't going to do a, a car that can be considered a kit car or a no, it's a replica, but we, we, we even hate that word. Anyhow, so I started approaching GM, and of course, everybody laughed at me. This, you you want to do what? You want to put a Corvette badge on a car that's not built inside Chevrolet? Never, ever going to happen. Corvette right. will send you a cease and desist. Many years later, about eight years later, eventually I managed to crack it, and we got the license from GM, and we were licensed to build the car with the Corvette name on. Now we had to do the car right, and I was like, okay, here we, how do we start? Well, at the time, there was a company called Duntoff Motors, and that's Alan Savage and his son, Edward, and they had originally done a license with August Duntoff when, when, when he was still alive to use his name, and they were building Grand Sport race cars with around two frames with everything correct. And I went and met with him, and, and we were still not, I was still not satisfied. Well, he linked me to Bob Ash, and I don't know if you know Robert Ash or Bob Ash. He restored four, I believe, of the original Grand Sports went through his building. Oh, okay. Went and met with him, and he had original tooling that he had made, plaster cast molds off the original car, number two, car, number three car that races with number two behind me. Um, he had every little part uh, remade, and he had the tools made for every little part for the car. He had also made the thin body that they raced the car, because a regular 63 vet was 3,600 pounds, somewhere right. around there, and a Grand Sport was 2,000 pounds. So you can imagine what lengths he went to to, to create the, these Grand Sports and get them correct. And Robert had everything. He had two storage units full of all these parts. Um, and we bought everything from him. And he had copies of the original blueprints. They're about that big. And we've got the copies of that. And that all went back to the factory. Um, and a correct frame that he had copied exact. Um, wow. You know, and we've, we've made a few small changes. Uh, a rack, power, uh, a power steering rack as opposed to the old steering box. Right. Um, and we've had to go with upgraded Wilwood brakes. But suspension and everything, we didn't do what all the replica companies have done where they put a C4 or a C5 Corvette suspension on. We weren't going to do that. The car had to be correct. We copied August. We looked at the drawings. We just improved where we had to. But if you look under the car, it all looks correct. It has 63 Grand Sport 
spots underneath it. Cool. The same as they did then. Now, Ken, when this guy contacted you, you think, oh, it's another whack job trying to build a replica car. Oh, boy. You know, I, I'd seen the product before, so I was yeah. really comfortable with what Lance <laughs> was doing. And then when I got a look at what this was all about, then uh, I had to have our engines in these cars. So it's, uh, it's absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. So exactly what motor are we dealing with? Well, the really cool part is, just like with every other Corvette, you can have just about anything you want. You know, the, the roller comes to us in really good shape, all set, all painted, beautiful condition. And uh, the buyer pretty much says he wants a 327, he wants to go old school, new school. Uh, this car actually happens to have a, a brand new LT4 engine in it. So okay. this is the engine that they put in the new Z06. Oh, okay. And uh, lots of power, very smooth, very dependable. Because I remember as a kid, was it a 327 taken out to 377? Yeah, 377. Right right on. And what yeah. horsepower was that making back in the day? Probably around 450 would my Four guess be. 450, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, and, but lots of torque. Lots oh, of torque. Huge yeah. torque, yes. And through a Muncie four-speed <laughs> box. Yeah. Okay. So if someone said, I want an exact copy. Oh, yeah. We, what, we have done that, do, and we have right. done that for owners. Yeah, the 377 yeah. with the Muncie. With the, yeah. Now, of course, 377 with the technology offered to them, uh, you get up at 550 horsepower. Right, so that's right. That's a whole yeah. lot more. And in, in this case, we, we can go to 750. I remember when I was a kid, there was a, there was a car that just knocked my socks off. It was Bill Thomas's Cheetah. Oh, yeah. Oh, remember yeah, that? And it had a drive shaft. Yeah. It didn't even have a drive no. shaft. It yeah. crankshaft <laughs> connected yeah. directly just about yeah. it. Yeah. It had the transmission yeah. and yeah. directly to the, to the uh, yeah. differential. Mid -mid and you sat on the differential. Yeah. It looked like the most uncomfortable yeah. hot car yeah. with the headers like right here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the, the, those were pretty wild. But this. These actually won a lot of races and, and, yes, and scared did. Carroll Shelby, didn't they? Oh, yes, they did. If, if GM had carried on backing the Corvettes, uh, you know, who knows? As I said, Argus had to sneak them out to, to some of the Chevrolet dealers in Texas and around, and, and those guys raced them until the bean counters found out about that too at GM and said, no, no, you've got to stop this. We don't want them racing. That's what we should explain. To people who don't know, there was a thing American manufacturers had agreed to stop racing. Right. I know whether because <coughs> hot rodding or kids are getting killed, whatever. There was no, but, you know, racers are racers, and they find a way, and through the back door. This is all done uh, on the QT yeah. off to the yeah. side, and yeah. these Corvettes, five of them come out of the factory. Yeah. Where, where, where what they? Five? I don't know. I don't know five. Was, they, I don't know they were crushed yeah. in the back. Yeah, <laughs> but I know yeah. they were going to build a yeah. bunch of them, yeah. right? 125, you were correct. There are some pretty famous racers that ended up sure. with these things, yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, you know, Roger Penske, right. Dick Ulstrand, you know, yeah. amazing car. Almo yeah. Johnson. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Dick Goldstrand's shop is right down the street. Right down the street. Yeah. He would come by here all the time. You know, first I said, who's that old guy poking <laughs> around there? And he said, I'm Dick. Oh, oh my gosh, it's Dick Goldstrand. You know, I mean, yeah. and he would, he was still racing Corvettes until the day he died. He's yeah. well in his 80s. But uh, he would was, come by here. And it was such an honor to have him come by. Yeah, I was lucky enough to get to meet him. And he had come past yeah. our shop, too. Yeah. Now, I remember the blue with white stripes. Did they ever build a red one? No, they were okay. not That's right. Were they all blue with white stripes? No, they were blue. There was a white, white one. one. There's sure. a different color blue, the Mecham blue. And, um, and then, of course, they changed. You know, through the, the last two got the roofs cut off, and they ended up with big blocks. Okay. And those were the two big block cars. Okay, because the American racing color was white yeah. with blue stripes. Yeah. So this just turned it around because white, because Mustangs are doing that, and they didn't. <laughs> It, it, yeah. They went blue with no, white stripes. No, no. I think they were a little before the Mustangs, so oh, we good. Well, that's true. That's yeah, true. We good. 63. Yeah. So tell us, let, let's let's start with this one. This is basically an out and out race car that you can drive on the street, correct? Yeah. Well, we build it two different ways. Now, we call this our touring package. This car has air conditioning, power steering, electric windows, central locking. Uh, it's, it's, it's a grand tour. It has the big seats. It's really comfortable. But we will build you a grand sport to the, to the original race spec right. where it, it won't have all the comfort. It won't have the, it'll have the perspex windows on the side. Right. Of course, the rear window is perspex. Um, it won't have air conditioning. And we've done a few like that. Most of those are done through our, through our Duntoff connection mm -hmm. in Texas, um, and they've been very successful. The Duntoff Corvettes are racing all over Europe uh, in, in, owners, in European owners, um, and a lot in South Africa. Alan, uh, in, South, you know, in America, Alan right. and his dad race both in America. Did you ever meet Duntoff? You know, I didn't, but no. I've got a couple of his cars in the car collection, oh, and okay. they get a whole bunch of attention. So. Amazing guy. Oh, he was an amazing guy. And uh, there were a couple of great books out on him. And he got started, I guess, doing the Duntoff heads for the flathead Fords, yes. the, the overhead valve conversion, which is pretty amazing. Let me, now this, 
cooler. Is this transmission cooler? That's your differential cooler. Differential so, cooler. you know, those days they did everything was functional. That right. was the best position to put it, right. and, and it worked. And, and you know, we, we, we made some changes. We, in the back was an access area for the trunk uh, to get to the battery. In our case, there's actually a trunk in the back there. Um, and as I said, we've made it a little larger inside. There's nothing changed on the measurements. That's all correct. Right. But we got more room in, so you'll find when you drive it, there's lots of room you come to. I work. recognize this mirror. That yeah. Like 63. Yeah. yeah. And I remember Duntoff, <laughs> this is open. Yeah. These are actually the, functional. The, the reason behind it, if you look at the nose of the Corvette, it's a perfect wing. Right. So when the car started getting to 140 and before that, it wanted to fly. So they had to get rid of all the air that was under the car. So they started cutting up. Right. The, the, put the big pins in the side, put the big pins at the back of the car, and they had to get the air out from underneath the car to keep it down. I remember Duntoff went to GM and said, can we cut holes in the... And they said, no, it costs more. But we'll put fake holes there. Yeah. They put fake slats, <laughs> yeah. which didn't do anything, yeah. obviously. Yeah. They look yeah. cool, yeah. but they didn't actually yeah. work. But yeah. yeah. But this one actually would keep it from getting airborne. Yeah, Very you know, nice. he did a lot of things. Even his exercise in aer aerodynamic, that wasn't on the original Corvette. That's actually a Chevy truck door handle, but he shaved the handle and got the handle back. That was his attempt at all the different aerodynamics, you know, minor at the time, because in 63, they weren't, you know, were thinking about it, but they right. hadn't got to where they are today. And of course, how he cut out the fenders and, you know, get the air out from underneath the car. So Ken, how does it work? Uh, they, do they send the finished car to you without engine and transmission and you put it in? That's the way it's supposed to work in every case. And the, the owner decides what other options he wants. There's options he can choose from Superformance, like uh, we were talking about, Lance said, air conditioning and comfort uh, things that can go in, or he can have it done without any of all that stuff. And right. so works, it works really well. Another interesting thing I want to mention, mention, we also have the period correct magnesium wheel that they ran on. Unfortunately, the two examples I've got you both don't have it on, but we have the 15 inch um, Halibrand style Corvette wheel. Okay. Made in magnesium, made in Michigan for our cars. Are they actually and they magnesium? Look, yeah, magnesium wheels, wow. pretty and cool. And they look really good and they too. Look really, cool. really good. Well, you've had a number of record-breaking Corvette. What is the most famous one? I'm trying to remember. Oh my gosh, I, you know, one of the things I, I know a lot of people may remember us for is we always raced the Blue Angels jet team. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we did that for, uh, uh, for some TV and always had a great time with that. But, but you, had, uh, you had a, a top speed car, it went 240, well, how fast did it Yeah, go? we built the engine for the uh, sledgehammer. That's what it yeah, was, sledgehammer. That's what you remember. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And uh, it was 250 something wow. miles an hour. Jeez. I can't remember exactly, but pretty amazing car. Yeah, and that's a push rod V8. It is. And what kind of revs was it turning at 250? Oh my gosh. I, I don't know, but I do know this. At one point, I remember when the car was on the track and, uh, and uh, on its way to reach that speed, uh, John Lingenfeld is driving the car and it's shaking like the devil. And they said, what'd you do about that? And he said, I just drove through it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's easier? Do you you get they get the crate engine from you. You put it in. Or do you, do most people like to have a built engine similar to the original. Well, there's you know, there's a lot of opportunity to do some fabricating underneath the hood. Yeah. You know, like any other car guy, when you're up against something and you take it to a show, you want to pop the hood and just right. kind of beat on your chest a little bit. Gotcha. So, you know, there's an opportunity to get the motor in. It'll fit all kinds of uh, combinations and. Uh, and it's always a lot of fun to do some extra fabricating with the things we've got to really make it showy also. Is this hood open or just yeah. come yeah, off? Yeah, it does. I can show yep. you. Okay. Yep. Well, first impression, look at the size of that radiator. Is that, That's bigger than the standard Z06 radiator, isn't yeah. it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. no it's, question it's about it. It's been a trademark of Super Performance. We overcool all our cars. We've, right. we've never had any issues. That was always known in the old days with replicas and kid cars having cooling issues. Right. We weren't going to have that in any Super Performance car. And it's a dry sump, obviously. This one we set up with a wet sump. Oh, you it is can a wet convert sump. it to Isn't wet that sump. that the dry sump over there? What is that there? Oh, you know what? You're right. It is Sorry, a dry... you just caught me out. Oh, yeah, you're right. right. You know what? I, you know, my first impression was do you have to pull the dry sump to change yeah. the battery? Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to do that. <laughs> no, no, we don't want to do that. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Jay, these things are making amazing power, though. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the product that General Motors is built here is absolutely unbelievable. We have one up on our engine dyno right now that we're making over 1,500 horsepower with without changing any of the bottom end. Really? So it's twin turbo. 
Uh, and we're not going to deliver a car with that kind of horsepower, but when you think about all the engineering that went into this thing and how good this motor really is, right. this is actually a real good fit for this car. And do you guys hand make all these pieces as well? Yes, a lot of it's custom made. Yeah. Uh, these performance uh, made a lot of the custom parts for this one. And one single fan is better than two smaller ones, huh? No, it, it's not that. We found that that was enough cooling. This engine's overcooled with right. what we've got. We've just got the one fan for those owners that just do parades and drive real slow, idling for hours right, and hours. Right. And so we added the one, one electric fan. And it's amazing how close your steering is to the header. Oh my God. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty close. Yeah, pretty cool. The other Boy. thing about this, Jay, is you know, we can actually make more power than this with this motor. Right. I mean, with a very <laughs> small adjustment and a few thousand dollars and some more <laughs> Lingenfelder massaging, you, you right. can go to 750 real quick. And the gearbox is six speed in this one? Yeah, this is a T56, yeah, Magnum. Would you build one with an automatic if somebody wanted we, one? We are. We built, uh, you know, a lot of people are going for the paddle and GM sell a connect and play, as they right. call it, with a six speed automatic with paddle shifters. Um, and we've, we've, we've been doing that. And it looks like a Corvette body, but you make the body, correct? Yeah, we make everything. Um, the, the body is made at our factory. The frame is all done at our factory. It's the, the original style, big, fat, round tube frame. Um, everything the way they did it, we did yeah. the same. And of course, the flares on the front wheels here as well, That's what they did that yeah. originally as well. They did that because the, the rules when they raced, you had to cover the tires. The right. body had to cover the tires. And I think it's amazing that GM signs off on it because there's no real upside for them yeah. unless it's perfect isn't yeah. it? it it was a challenge and they did you know they they were back and forth a few times and really good guys at gm licensing ben romero and and, and steve at the time uh, he's not there anymore uh, they were they were very supportive and the, some of the gm engineers that we spoke to you know they, they knew all the modern stuff but they were really impressed with us and they loved what we were doing and it's, it's just cut, bringing the whole GM culture together. You know, so this one with the sort of, quote, the Turing package, as you yeah. call it, what does this weigh, about 3,400? No, it's actually under 3,000 pounds. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's still is. under 3,000 pounds. Is this a, a more thin wall fiberglass? No, thing? it's, a, you know, the, 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 we've shown people we can actually sit on the fenders and stand on it. It's pretty strong. Yeah. Uh, super performance wheel really cars for 25 years now and, and in the U.S. And all those with the older Cobras are coming up now 25 years old. There's not a crack or a mark yeah. on the fiberglass. Well, I know, I know the original Cobras, you go like that. Oh, yeah. And you, yeah. you leave your thumbprint. Yeah, the aluminum body. The FBI body, is yeah. going to find you because your thumbprint yeah. is right yeah. there yeah. in the car. Yeah, yeah, they were so thin. Yeah. Yeah, we always have people coming up to the cars and saying, is, is this aluminum? And when they do that, we say, well, yes, fool, it is aluminum because you've just put two dead seated yeah, down. Yeah. You proved it yourself. And of course, you got these, re these are brake coolers back here. Correct. Functional yeah. as well. Yeah, full, fully functional. In 63, did the original, I guess the original Grand Spot had four wheel discs, didn't it? Or yes. did it have drums in the back? You might have stumped me now. I believe it had discs all around. Okay. I think it had discs all around. Yeah, all okay. the way around. Because I've got a 63 and it's drums all the way around. Yeah. Yeah. But right. by 64, I think was yeah. the first. Maybe think, 65 was the first year. And another big difference on the car. You know, everybody will look at this and say, but you say it's 63. It's not a 63 Corvette. Where's the split window? You're right. Well, of course, Argus wanted the car lighter. So he cut that little bit of extra fiberglass out. And, and that's a Perspex rear window, which was on the Grand Sport. Yeah. So he went to every length to do the light. Yeah, a friend car. of mine's dad, when I was in high school, bought a 63. And when the 64s came out, he was so <laughs> mad. Yeah. He had this cut out and he yeah. had a 64 put in. A lot of people And then years did that. later, he tried to give it. It's real, oh, it's really a 64. It's more yeah, valuable. Oh, you're good. a liar. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Because my 63, you back up and you just. <laughs> you know, yeah. Is there a kid in a bike right here? You can't yeah. see anything. Yeah. But it, it did look a lot cooler. It, it did, did look, look a lot cooler. cooler. Let's go to this one over here. Now, this is sort of an exact copy of the one that raced in 63, correct? That's correct, yeah. Um, as you see, it's raced with the number two on, but it was actually the third Grand Sport built. Okay. I assume this is the, is this based on the 327? Yeah, this is a more accurate, uh, pair correct look and uh, with, with a ball intake. But Ken will let us t tell you more about this one. It's actually an LS3, oh, a yeah, crate, okay. uh, crate motor with some Lingenfelder additions and such. Um, the coolest part about this, and I know you can see, is this eight stacker that's provided by Borla. To me, there was nothing sexier than the Corvettes or the Bizzarinis that had the Webers on them. Right. When cross you opened, ramp. Yeah, the cross ramp. ramp. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it just looked great. Yeah. Yeah. And I always wonder when they did this, was it to look cool or was it more functional or was it both? 
Yeah, it's a little bit of both, Jay. Yeah. Um, you know, back in the day, these were problematic to a certain degree, although they had lots of ability to get them tuned and run right. Uh, these days, this is more the look than anything else. Yeah. And as you can tell, I mean, if somebody get, wants to take this to a car show and they pop the hood, you get that same thing you were talking about. Right. How cool is that, right? We, we call it the ultimate man's jewelry. Yes. I mean, it just, that does it for me. Uh, I mean, an expensive painting on the wall, okay, that's impressive, but I'd rather have that. I like the look of that. Now, are these, are these screens effective, really, in keeping uh, the air They're clean? only a little effective for the big stones, put it that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah. that would be a little scary yeah. to me. Yeah. Yeah. It, it almost seems be, yeah. like there should be a cover, yeah. and then you take it to a car show and yeah. you pop it pop off, it off. You know. Uh, and we do have setups like that where the whole box goes over and it has air cleaners built into it. Um, but most guys want this. And if you, you'll remember at car shows, the guys putting tennis balls in. Right, right, yeah, like the that. tennis balls. Well, we find that looks a little prettier than tennis balls. Yeah. I and think the guy that buys this car, too, wants that look. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so if it means a little extra maintenance or whatever, so right. be it. And this, of course, is, is the wet sump engine. This is a wet, yeah, I'll get it yeah, right this yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's a wet sum. And what's interesting here, the, the LS3 is not a very pretty engine as it comes, but we had these special valve covers made. Unfortunately, you might have known of the um, past now, Clay Cook, he, had, he was doing all these special valve covers and all that. And, uh, and they make it look like a, 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 an old school pushrod engine. Yeah. Well, it really is uh, attractive. I like it in black, too. It looks very nice. And you've got modern air conditioning oh, yeah. in here yeah. as well. Uh, what else have we got here? Let's see. I like the fuse box setup, but that's all stock. Uh, batteries in the same place. This one, you get the battery out easier. Yeah. And this car has actually done many long trips. This was a SEMA car in 2016 in right. Ken, in right. the Lingapalda booth. And after that, we left from Southern California through Nevada into Utah, right through Utah to Colorado, ended up in the Rockies. We took all the drives. We actually took two Grand Sports. Uh, and, and we did about 3,000 miles in a weekend, uh, and, long week. And you've got a little bit of muffler here, not much. Yeah, yeah. Now, when you took this long trip, was your wife with you? Uh, yeah, my wife goes really? everywhere. Oh, no, she's, you know, we've been together since we were 10 years old, and wow. she gets on the motorcycle. Well, that's illegal, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess we South Africa's a little different. Yeah, a little different, yeah. a little different. <laughs> <laughs> but no, she comes with us. She's a trooper. She's done oh, miles and miles in the Cobras, and now she prefers the Grand Sports because of the roof and the right. air conditioning and yeah. the luggage room. Now, all of a sudden, we can't just go to a small little bag. But as you said, you will build a convertible Grand Sport yeah. as well. we will And do they this. actually did back in period. Correct. They, they cut the, the two of the five uh, coupes. See, see of the two, I think I prefer this one because it's more the feel. You know, a lot of times when people recreate a vintage car, they take all the patina or the character yeah. out of it, you know, mm -hmm. like the old Cunninghams from the 50s, yeah. the big 331, yeah. it, it had those haunches in the yeah. front. Yeah. I mean, it, and it had a truck steering box yes, in it. it but, that's the fun part. I mean, yeah. that's what you want to recreate. And that's know? what real car guys enjoy, driving yeah. a real car. Yeah. You get that sensation out of driving these. It's not going to drive for you. There's no nannies here. There's no ABS right, traction right. control. Even though we do have it available, but we tend not to put it in a lot and of And this car. is a six-speed. This is a six-speed, too. Okay. I'm with you, Jay. This, I have one. This is such a beautiful car. I had to build one for myself, too. Right. So we've got one sitting in the Lingenfelder collection. It looks just like this. Got a little different engine set up. We've got the dual quad thing going on. But it gets so much attention everywhere we take it. And now, yours has got the 15-inch wheels on. Does, all yeah. period correct. And the noise these things make. Yeah. I mean, if you're a real car guy, it's got to make noise, yeah. right? Yeah. So. And the glass covers, didn't they run them with white? Yes, they painted them white when they didn't need lights, when they weren't doing 12-hour races right, or whatever. Right, right, okay. Yeah. That's a, I remember seeing the white, yeah. and I just thought they yeah. came off and the lights were underneath. Yeah. And the lights were, yeah, they were. Okay. They had to have them. And was that, well, I guess it's lighter than having the, because the 63 yes. had the... That whole mechanism, no, August would never have used that. It was right. very heavy. Yeah, too heavy. You know, everything that was pot metal and stuff in the, in the Corvette is aluminum in this car. Right. The gauge cluster, it was not that pot metal, it was made out of plastic. So he did everything. And you had to recast your own door, hand, door handles here as well. Well, no, we could buy those from Chevy. Oh, you can. It's the okay. old truck handle, but we had. But, but yeah, I mean, it's sculpted. not the Corvette. Yeah. Because they look beefier than yeah. my '63. Yeah, they were yeah. basically truck door handles. And you go with Willwood. We love Willwood disc brakes. Yeah. I, I, I put them on everything that we have, yeah. and uh, you can adapt them to almost any application. Yeah. yeah. Super performance runs on Willwoods in everything now. Um, even got Shelby to switch over on the Shelby Cobras. We do have Willwoods in them too. 
Well, which one are we going to drive? I'd like to drive this one only because I think it's going to give us a more period yeah. feel. Can we take okay. this one out? Yeah, you're welcome. Shot? Either one. Yeah, that one, of course, is the fast one. Uh, and well, we know this you is like still pretty quick, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, oh, it yeah. runs fast. I mean, I've got a Z06, so I yeah. know what that so you know feels, what like. feels like. But I'm just, I mean, to me, it's, it's fun to recreate the period, yeah. you know. And, and cars, the speed, it's like I've got some 1909 white steam cars, and when you take when that goes 50 miles an hour, it feels like a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. if I put a modern engine in it and did it, then it loses its character. Yeah. I mean, this if I was going to buy one of these, this is the one I would want because it just has the character and the look and the feel of the original car. So let's uh, let's give this a shot. So who's who's riding with me, Lance? Are you riding yeah. with me? All yeah. right. Ken, thank All you right. very much. You're welcome, Jay. Yes, thank you for building these pleasure. great motors. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> thank you. Have fun, guys. Let's give it a shot. Oh, this is going to be fun. the red one afterwards. <laughs> it's a whole lot different. <laughs> oh yeah, well, it's probably like the ZR1. Yeah, yeah well you got the ZR1. But feeling it in a car that's about 600 pounds lighter than the ZR1. This is quite flickable, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Just as the economy turned, and of yeah. course that affected us. 
So we actually backed off for about four years before we did the relaunch. And uh, so we've really only been putting them out the last two years. And the thing is, I've had so many GT40 sales, we've got a year wait on GT40s and, yeah. uh, and Daytonas and the Cobras, that we build more of those and they're easier to build. Yeah. Cars actually, you think it's simple, but it's really, it's a Nothing is difficult. No, nah, well, I'm not talking to you. You know, the you one thing cars. I find out is yeah. everybody thinks everybody else's yeah. job yeah. is yeah. easy. Yeah, no, nah, you build a lot of cars, so you know what I'm talking about. And yeah. it just takes, yeah. you know, you're paying guys so much an hour and the flat rate says 20 minutes to fix the radio. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, it's a yeah, third hour yeah, and it's still not yeah, playing. Yeah, yeah, you know, correct, and yeah. That, that's... Yeah. And this is also, and you can feel it, one of our solid mount cars. Yeah. Because um, this was going to be a press car and a track car and all that, which it never ended up being. It was turned out too pretty for us to do that with. And what so, did you say this one's about 450 horse? Yeah, this one's around 450. The engine's capable of, of around 550 with a chip and a different change to the ball injection. But I've had to, you know, use one the idea with press driving it and all that. No, I like this. People get horsepower obsessed. Like it, yeah. it doesn't fix every problem. No, no. You know, and there's to me there's a certain satisfaction in enjoying the power delivery. Yeah, yeah. When it comes out so quickly, yeah. you know, one, two, three, okay, now I'm in jail. What happened? Yeah. yeah. I was going 130 miles yeah, an hour. Yeah, you know? Yeah. I, I like older cars because I enjoy watching the tech sweep across the dial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you sort of yeah, Coming up to seven, shit, boom, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm not racing anybody in the street. I'm just enjoying myself. Just enjoy your driving, get the sound. Well, yeah. I, always, I always say about it, our Cobras, and, th and this is the same thing. You can get all the thrill up to 80 mile an hour, and you're, still, you, you're not going to go to jail. Right. Whereas exactly. if you're getting a, you know, you know, the McLaren or the Porsche, nothing yeah. doesn't feel like anything under 100 mile an hour. manufacturer has oh, a yeah. factory in oh, South okay. Africa, yeah. And during the, the uh, sanctions, we both, now we import a lot, but we built everything before, sanc yeah. before the sanctions stopped. What power steering unit is this? Is it Corvette? No, no, this is uh, Detroit, uh, not Detroit Speed. Uh, aftermarket? Yeah, aftermarket, yeah. It makes the car feel incredibly light, but yeah. not, not floaty or boaty. No, you know? no, no. Now this engine was originally drive by wire, right? Wasn't it? Yes. Yes. So you did. We we put the baller system in, then we did this. And as I say, that was a lot. Look, it just started a couple of a month ago. We should have changed it. So yeah. the cables got dry inside there. We've got yeah, to yeah. replace it. It wasn't like I felt it when we put it in the trailer. I said, God, you got to change it. Why not go to fly by wire? Uh, but the baller system's not set up for that. Yeah, can't yeah. Okay. yeah. The, the 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 red one is fly is drive by wire. Does the baller system meet U.S. emissions? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Let's try these brakes, see how they work. Yeah, go for it. Hit it. Stop on that line. Here we go. Oh, very good. Look at that. Yeah. We yeah. just put a set of these Willwood brakes on my 58 Chrysler yeah. Imperial. Because <laughs> that had nothing. I mean, you just could yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's got no padding, it's got nothing. 
Yeah, I think it's fantastic that GM actually gave you the rights to that. That almost seems inconceivable because yeah. there's, there's really nothing in it for them other than unless the product's good, it's a bit of glory, right. you know, but that's pretty impressive. What, what also helped, we've got a few GM execs that actually own some of our cars. Yeah. So, you know, they, they know that we built a good product and we right. represented Ford's name and Shelby's name well all the years. What was the first car Superformance built? Was it Cobra? Cobra? Yeah, it was a little Cobra. And who owns that one now? Where is it? Funny enough, um, actually, I don't know the exact, I know the first one that came into the U.S. came in 92. And that's, there's a guy in New York that has the car. Yeah. And, uh, and i got to be honest, it's not a very nice looking example. Yeah. It was, we were still experimenting at that time. And, it, you know, we'd gone like everybody else, modernized the dash and all that. It's, it's, it's actually terrible. Um, after car, approximately car 25, somewhere around there, we went 100% period correct with, with Smith gauges. Actually, it's probably lower than that. And everything done the proper yeah. way. Reverse sweep. I always wonder how a young person, if you're 21 and you never drove one of these or yeah. rode in one of these, like to me, I don't know whether this is the way a car should be or whether it's just yeah. nostalgia yeah. for what I remember. Yeah. I, I, I just wonder how a young person who, if they would be more excited about this than say, a new Z06 or a McLaren or something yeah, like yeah. that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you about that. We we got a whole lot of these influ influencers or in influencers. Influencers. Influencers that yeah. and they've got a million like YouTube likes and stuff. We got these young kids to come and drive them. Well they actually got big three of them got never driven a stick. They looked at it like, oh shit, what do we do with that? Yeah, yeah. So we had to teach them all that. And um, they actually they I've got the YouTube and I'll send you the link. And, and the way they describe it, they're like, man, this is old school. And this, and they use all the language and all the, the hype. And they never felt a car that makes so many noises. You know, all that it, it did impress them. And these originally had the 36 gallon gas tank, yeah, didn't they? Yeah, they could to do the long races. Well, this is a pretty exciting car. You know, if your dream has always been to have one of the five Grand Sport Corvettes that were built that will never be sold. And if they did sell them, they'd be $5 million. Yeah. The nice thing is, it's about as close as you can get. And to be honest, it's probably better and more streetable. I mean, that's the great thing about modern technology. You get the old look and feel, but obviously with modern reliability and electronics. And you've been, Bill, how many cars have you built so far? Uh, we built a little over 6,000 cars, um, you know, approximately 30, Grand Sports, but right. over 6,000 Cobras, right. GT40s, and uh, Shelby Daytonas. Well, the most impressive thing is the fact that General Motors has sanctioned this as a Corvette. I've never heard them doing that with anybody, so that's a testament to your skill in building these cars. So, Lance, thank you for bringing it by. Thanks, Jay. And thanks, Ken, too. Yeah, no, Ken's amazing guy. No, All right. What a support. And thanks for letting us on the show. Thank you. Thanks for letting me drive this thing. See you guys next week. <laughs>